Edward Thompson. Welcome to Liverpool. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I'm Oscar Willis from TheMacLife.com, sitting with the main event star, or certainly <laughs> one of them, from this Sunday's UFC Liverpool. Um, how are you finding it? How's, you've just arrived last night. How's I sure been? did, man. It was it's actually really good. I mean, the way they said the weather uh, is usually not like this. Right. So, uh, you know, it reminds me of back home. You know, being in South Carolina, it's like this every day. You know, very sunny, very beautiful. Uh, the fans have been actually really great here. Yeah. I've been here for the past two days, and um, every, everybody has been telling me, hey, you know, you got to watch out for the Scousers, they call them. <laughs> like, what's the Scouser? You know what I mean? But they said it was, uh, um, you know, uh, the fans is very passionate about their fighters, and um, um, I haven't, you know, I haven't had any problems, to be honest with you. Everything's been going great. Fans have been awesome. So before you came here, were you sort of anticipating was maybe playing a bit of a villain role? Yeah, you know, which is kind of funny. When you think about a bad guy, you don't think about, you know, Stephen Wonderboy right. Thompson. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it actually puts a smile on my face, you know, thinking that, hey, I'm, I'm coming here in enemy territory, uh, expected to be the bad guy. Right. You know, I've always been very respectful and I'm, I'm going to be here. Uh, I'm going to walk out with a smile on my face. I know I'll probably get in the booze, but it is what it is. Is this the first time you've ever had something like this where you're coming to enemy territory? Is this the first time you've had to play the bad guy or have there been moments before in your career? Yeah, there's been moments. I mean, I fought Roy McDonald in Canada. Right, okay. But uh, I, I, I know the fans here, a little bit, you know, they say it's a little bit more passionate, uh, yeah, saying that in, in, in a good way uh, <laughs> for, their, you know, for, their, for their fighters here. You know, um, I know it's a big uh, football um, uh, town, so I think there's a game coming up Saturday, so I'm, I'm excited to see what's going on uh, and how it, how the fans are with yeah. that. You know, I've never been in the mix of it. Well, it's a it's a big game to catch. It's a, the Champions League <laughs> final, and they've uh, they've not been there for a while, so you'll certainly see them out there most oh, yeah. passionate. I think with the <laughs> So let's go back to the start of this. When Till's name first came up for you, I think I'm right in saying it wasn't necessarily something you were particularly hugely enthusiastic about. So can you take me back from the first time you got linked to him to accepting the fight and now? Like, what was that journey? Yeah, well, you know, when, when I was first approached, it was actually before I even fought Masvidal. I was actually in, in New York City uh, preparing for him. It was fight week when somebody had mentioned, hey, what would you think about fighting Darren Till? And to be honest with you, I didn't know who Darren Till was. You know, I had to go back and do a little bit of research to find out who, you know, he just recently fought. It was, it was uh, Donald Cerrone. And... Um, you know, directly after the fight, I was approached again. I was like, you know, I ended up breaking both of my thumbs during the fight. So it was a no right off the bat. I was like, no, you know, I, I can't. I'm not going to be ready for when you guys want me to be ready. I had just broken my thumbs in my last fight. And on top of that, I kind of wanted to see where the welterweight division was going. I understood that Tyron Woodley had sh shoulder surgery. I was still ranked number one. There was talk of, uh, you know, an interim title. And I wanted to see if I was at the top of that list. Um, Obviously, I wasn't. Right. Um, you know, he, thumbs are healed up now, and and uh, you know, I want to I want to stay busy. And what better guy to do it with than the up and coming uh, you know superstar Darren Till? Um, I want to kind of test myself against those guys who are everybody saying the new breed of, of, of MMA is. You know, let, and and plus on top of that, I want to let everybody know too that I'm here to stay. Right. So there was an element of oh, if this guy wants it, like. If I'm that over, over the hill or whatever, he can find out. Is that what's yeah, the element? Yeah, yeah, I think so too. You know, I mean, you know, he 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 said no no 35 year old is, can last against him. You know, he says he he's gonna knock me out in two rounds, and I'm here to say he's not going to he's not gonna knock me out at all. So um, there was, I mean, there was a little bit of a hold up because of my thumbs, but now that they're healed up, man, it's go time. So let's his talk. He he sort of combined this. Uh, being respectful of you while also almost being a little bit dismissive of you. Mm -hmm. if that's, I think that's fair to say. Do you look at him, Colby Covington, certain, to a degree, Usman, and think like, oh, this is just a new wave of welterweights that you apparently have a little bit of chat with them? Or do you sort of think this is like an unfortunate thing of guys trying to make their names too early or without getting there? Because you're a traditional martial artist. Yeah. Just, like, not sort of in your I mean, ways. maybe kind of both. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of both. I mean, um, you know, the UFC was just bought by an entertainment, an entertainment industry. You know, it's all, all about entertainment now, and and I kind of understand that uh, in order to make it a little bit in, the, in this industry, you're gonna have to talk a little bit. That's not who I am. You know, I see a lot of these guys come out, like you said, like Colby Covington, um, and and these guys. I think Conor McGregor was one of the, the the first to really 
to really make it big with it. You know, there were some guys before him, but they just kind of seemed silly. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, uh, I think so. I mean, I, I think that is a part of who he is as well. You know, coming from Liverpool, um, uh, he, he definitely has to get the gap. But I do think it has helped him to get to where he is, you know, to get this fight. Is there a line with trash talk in MMA? Is there a line where you go, okay, I can sort of, that's funny, and then there's like, that's too funny? Yeah, I mean, you kind of you kind of get to uh, some of these guys, I think like Colby Covington, yeah. who just kind of go too far. You know, they make it too personal with just about everybody. I mean, you walk in front of the guy, he's talking trash about you. You know, he's talking trash about Joe Rogan, Kenny Florian, and just guys he just doesn't need to be even bothering with. And and uh, it comes off as silly to me. Mm -hmm. So do you look, let's look in your head for a moment, not to dis you know, disrespect Hill, but looking ahead, Covington and RDA are going to fight for that interim belt. As someone who's fought the champion, both very, very, very close decisions, it's rare you get a third opportunity if you didn't win one of those fights. Do you look at that interim fight and think, well, he might do better against Woodley, so I'm kind of rooting for this guy? Yeah, yeah, obviously. And, and it, it helps me as well. I think if one of these guys beat Tyron, then I'll get that next shot. Right. It'll be faster for me to fight for the title again. But uh, if I want to be real about it, both of those guys are going to be, have a very hard time fighting Tyron. Tyron's a big welterweight, very strong, and he's good everywhere. He's got good strike striking. As you saw in the first fight with me, he's he hit me a few times, which very few people have in, in the welterweight division. Um, and he's got great wrestling. I mean, he is, his takedown defense against uh, Maya. That said, uh, he's not a very exciting fighter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's, he's, he's fairly boring. I think Colby Covington is as well. Um, but I think the, if anybody's going to do it, I think RDA can't. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very good everywhere. He's very crafty on the ground. He's got good jiu-jitsu. But um, if he does win that, it's, it's a faster shot for the title for me. So I'm definitely rooting for one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um, how do you see Till's role in the worldweight division after Sunday? Like, Do you think he's going to be one of those guys who's just going to slowly get there? Or do you think he'll remain a superstar even after should you win on Sunday? Oh, yeah, man. I, I, he definitely has the, the skill. He's very intelligent, very smart guy, especially with his words. I think he's going to stay, you know, uh, a very important uh, role in the welterweight division. Um, and he's exciting. Mm -hmm. He's a very exciting fighter. Uh, you know, everybody wants to see a knockout, mm -hmm. you know, and he does what he does against uh, Donald Cerrone. He's going to stay at the top of the game for sure. Do you anticipate him being very much with forward pressure against you on Sunday? Oh, definitely. I, I see him, especially if he says he's going to knock me out in the second round, I think he's going to come out aggressive, uh, which is what I like. I love guys fighting uh, aggressively. You know, that's what I'm kind of most used to, mm -hmm. you know, fighting those wrestler guys who kind of come straight forward, um, and I do well against those kind of guys. Um, that said, I think it's, I don't think this fight's going to be easy at all. Um, uh, you know, he's fighting in front of his hometown, so I know he's training as hard as he can to, to, to defeat me in front of his family and, and friends. So I expect the best Darren, Darren Till come May 27th. So, two more questions. Firstly, how do you see the fight going on Sunday? He says he can knock you out in two rounds. How do you see it going? Definitely not. I mean, uh, he's going to be swinging, but he's going to be missing. I never like to. I never like to predict or a knockout or anything. I always visualize my hands being raised at every fight. If the knockout happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm ready for a five-five in a round war, and that's how I always prepare for this. Okay. And the last question, Saturday night, it's the Champions League final, Real Madrid versus Liverpool. You're in Liverpool. <laughs> Who will you be supporting? Perfect opportunity to play the heel here. Who do you want to support? Who do you want to win? Uh, talking about for the um, for the Champions League final. Oh my goodness, uh, that's a hard one, man. I, I, I'm I'm going for I'm going for Liverpool, man. Obviously, I'm here. So You're just too nice. I, I, I am. I am. Nice. I'm here. Um, I hear a lot about the the players here, and I think it's Salom. So, what, uh, Salah. A Salah? Salah. A Salah. I think so. And no, I uh, so Salah. hopefully, hopefully, uh, of course, he probably won't be, but it'll be cool to be able to, be able to actually meet him and, and uh, kind of see the stadiums and, um, and kind of get a feel. I've never been really a, a football fan. You know, me in, 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 the, in the fight game, I've always been, of course, of combat sports, but uh, I think it's cool to be here in Liverpool and actually get to see what actually goes on during the game. Uh, right here, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Awesome. Stephen, thank you very much for the time. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it.